I'm Mark Evanstein with music.py, and in these videos, I'm going to be showing you how to connect Python to Ableton. So we're on to the last video here where we're going to add the final touch, which is an ethereal theremin part. As a reminder, here's what we had already, the bass and the percussion. And this is the part that we're going to add. So let's look at a simple script that controls the theremin. So I've got scamp, I've got my session, I've got a theremin part, which I create using s.new MIDI part. And again, it's sending through IAC bus one, channel number two. And so all I have to do to get a theremin sound to play from Python is I say theremin dot play note, let's say 78, 0.8, 2.0, .0, and let's take a listen. Beautiful. By the way, I made a note to myself right here. Um, if we go to the theremin in Ableton and we expand it out a little bit, it's got so many different controls that we can work with. And all the way over here, see where it says mono, Right now it's on poly settings so that you can have multiple different theremins at once. On mono, it can be a little bit choppier, so make sure to click through to poly. Anyway, back to Python. What I've got for the theremin is really a relatively simple script. So I'm gonna uncomment all of this. What we've got is a list of four pitches and a list of four durations. And then while true, so we're gonna loop this over and over and over. We're gonna shuffle the pitches and shuffle the durations. So we're always gonna get a random order of these pitches and a random order of these durations. And then we're gonna loop through the pitches and durations. We zip them together and take each pitch and duration one at a time. And we play a note with that pitch and that duration. And then at the end, we wait one so that there's a little bit of a gap between the phrases. Let's take a listen. So this is cool and all, but wouldn't it be nice to modulate the timbre of the theremin sound? Well, if you saw the previous video, you probably already know how we're going to do that with CC messages. By the way, if you're intrigued by this combination of Python and music, consider taking my course on cadenze.com. It's a totally beginner friendly way of learning Python while making music in the process. So again, to train it, we're going to use uh, MIDI CC 15 in this case. I'll say theremin.send MIDI CC 15 zero. I'm going to do exit so that it doesn't do anything else that's confusing. And so this script now, all it does is send a single MIDI CC message on CC number 15 of channel two. Remember, scamp takes ranges from zero to one, and then the ultimate CC messages go from zero to 127 or whatever it is. So then again, over here in Ableton, we click on MIDI, and down here we've got all of the different knobs that we can train. I'm going to scroll over here to FM amount. And that's the one that I want to train. Going back to Python, I'll hit run. It's going to send this CC message. And now in Ableton, you can see channel two, CC number 15 is mapped to FM amount. Let's turn off MIDI mode. Okay, so here's the really cool thing that I want to show you that I've built into Scamp for controlling things like this. When we were mapping the filter of the drum part, we just had a bunch of these send MIDI CC messages in a loop. But in Scamp, it's actually possible to set values like that from an extra argument to play note called the properties argument. So after pitch, volume, and duration, I can give it a dictionary saying that param number 15 should map to a random value from zero to one. Let's take a look at what this sounds like. Notice that every note is randomly setting this FM amount. But you know what we can do even better? We can give it an envelope. So I could say 0, 0,5, comma 0. And what it's going to do is it's going to interpolate between the values 0, a half, and 0. Let's take a listen to that. Mm -hmm. 
See this knob moving really smoothly? Now actually within Scamp, this list is getting parsed to what's called an envelope object. And in the final theremin part over here, I've actually created a list of these envelope objects directly. So the first envelope goes from zero to 0.3 to zero. These are the durations of the different segments. So half the time spent going this way, half the time spent going this way. And then these are curve shapes. I can actually show you what this looks like down here. So if I go down here and say from scamp import envelope, and I paste this and I say dot show plot, this is the actual shape that it's creating. Notice that the negative two curve shape makes it do more motion early and less motion late, whereas two makes it do more motion late and less motion early. Anyway, so I've got three different envelopes, one which goes from zero to 0.3 to zero, so kind of brighter than darker, one that just gets brighter and one that just gets darker. And so what I've got down here is that when the theremin plays a note, parameter 15, the one that's mapped to the FM in Ableton, is gonna be based on a random choice of FM curves. And then the other thing that I'm doing is I'm normalizing that to the duration of the note. So that it stretches it or squishes it so it's the exact length of the note. Okay, so let's take a listen to this version of the theremin part. So a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting having those three different curve shapes. So there you go, that is the theremin part. And all that remains is to put all of this together. Now, I briefly mentioned the idea of forking in Scamp before, and you can see down here in the full version, we've got a bunch of calls to fork. The idea here is that I've taken each of the individual scripts, the bass part, the drum part, the theremin part, I've made sure to import everything that all of them need, and then I've pretty much copied the scripts verbatim into three different functions, one called play bass part, one called play drum part, and one called play theremin part. It's actually really nice. In Python, you can nest functions inside of other functions, so there's no problem with just copying and pasting the whole thing verbatim. And then at the bottom, we fork all three parts. And what fork does is it makes them happen in parallel. So now we're finally able to put all the pieces together We've got a bass part, we've got a drum part based on cellular automata, and we've got a theremin part. And let's take a listen to the whole thing. So there you have it. I hope this series of videos has been interesting to you. It's been really fun for me to make. And as I said before, I wanna make more videos of this Python to Ableton thing. I've been just kind of getting into Ableton for the first time and working through these videos. And it's such a powerful combination. I was actually thinking of doing some long form videos in which I work with some friends who are really good at Ableton. And I code in Python, they code in Ableton, and we cook up something interesting together but my free trial for Ableton expires today. So if you wanna see more videos like this, you gotta like this video, you gotta comment on it, you gotta subscribe and click the bell, you gotta watch it five or six times in a row, share it with all your friends, and make sure that it's the center of your life for the next two to three weeks. So with that, I'll play you out with some weird ghostly funk music.